See you in the garden. Well, hi guys. Today, I'm rendering suet. Or well, getting, getting it started anyway. Just leave that one on there. Let's get it all cut up. And get into the pot. Now I've got uh, a little bit of water here, uh, filtered rainwater. Just put a little bit in the bottom, stop it burning. I'm going to do this on a gas burner, so we'll see how we go. So I'm just going to cut it up fairly small. It's going to take a little while. So I went to the local butcher and um, asked him if they had any suet. And he said, yeah, maybe. So he went out the back and had a look. And um, here it is. He gave it to me for free. He said sometimes the carcasses come with the suet inside them, other times they don't. But I'll be making uh, some trips <laughs> periodically to the butcher and um, stock up. Because this is quite uh, expensive and look, I really don't care having to render it. I've got uh, gas burners here and gas is relatively cheap, <laughs> if you can say that. Anyway... Uh, I'll get this all cut up and into the pot and we'll go from there. You can sort of see the size that I'm doing. I don't think it really matters a lot, but it'll help with the rendering time. So that's that done. Let's get uh, all this good stuff in the pot. Try not to waste anything. And we're ready to render. Well, we're well on our way now. Smells really nice. <laughs> so I've got it on a, a gas burner and it was a little bit high at the beginning, but we're getting there. So I've just got the middle ring on as low as I possibly can get it. I don't know if I'm getting there. There we go. And uh, there you go. 
So I guess it's been on for about an hour. So I'll come back when I think it's finished and show you the result. So we are ready to put in the jars. So I've got a few jars here ready and I'm just going to ladle it out and put it through a fine mesh strainer. So let's get on the tripod and we'll get started. Mm. I should be saving the, what do you call these? Because I'll be uh, running them down further for some nice little crackles. Right, that's one job. Now what I'm going to do with these is um, let them cool down, put the lids on and I'll vacuum seal them. Just to get any air out and they should be shelf stable for quite some time. Well, they say up to a year, maybe more. Anyway, I'd better go and get um, something to put these pork crackles in. Oh, well, beef crackles. <laughs> huh, probably need more than that too. Oh, well, Chooks are having a lot of fun down there. We've got six new chicks hatched. So I don't know how many jars I'm going to get out of this, but I was hoping for five, but it looks like we'll only get maybe three, four. this crackling stuff here I'm going to render it down a bit more get a bit more fat out of them in the meantime I'll just cover these uh, while they cool down and uh, use the vacuum sealer and seal the lids on all right that's about it for this video all right so now it's time to vacuum seal these jars so I've just got a very old vacuum sealer here and I've got the, uh, uh, where does that come from again? Oh, it's a food saver, that's correct. Sorry. There we go. Uh, jar sealer. And I've just rigged up the, the hose to fit onto the vacuum sealer. I'll just plug that one back in. So let's put you on the tripod and We'll get a few vacuum sealed, these four anyway. Uh, in the meantime, because it's one's not quite full, I'm rendering... Oop, I better turn this down. <laughs> There's quite a bit of water in there. But I'm rendering the rest of the niblets. Uh, which one do I turn off, this one? Uh, 
Yep, fine. And that one. Sorry, just uh, getting the flames right there. And turn it right down, give it a bit of a stir. And I should be able to get uh, a fair bit more out of that to fill that jar. And maybe a bit more. Sorry guys, there we go. Right, so that's going to just render nice and gently into the evening. Right, back to back in sealing these. Alright, let's get ourselves a lid. All three, or four. One there, one more for that. Takes a little bit. So I'll just show you one and fast forward the rest. I'd like to get quite a bit more next time and you know, it's, it's less work if you do more, if you understand my meaning. So next time I think I'll just save it up, put it in the freezer, and pull it all out and do a big batch. There we go, that one's done. So, we just unplug the... And there we go, you can see the difference. Ready to store on the shelf. Let's go to the next one. No, no, this is a totally different idea. To you see, look, it, 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 that's sterile as hell, but if you leave air in here, well, yeah, you don't want air in there, and that's the exact reason. Perfect. So those four are ready to go away, and I won't vacuum seal that. But there's a, there's a bit of stuff on the bottom, but that's really good. So how that vacuum works, what, it takes air out of the side here. It takes it out, yeah. seals it. Yeah, and seals it. All right, so they've turned out beautifully, beautiful colour. It's not quite, uh, not quite set there, but there is a bit of sediment at the bottom, but who cares on each of them. So they can go on the shelf. Yeah. Anyway, that's probably the the last one that I did. And this one here, I'm yet to fill up properly. And hopefully, after all the water evaporates off this, we'll get uh, enough to fill that jar and maybe a bit more. And some really nice... Uh, Beef crackles, is that what you'd call them? <laughs> Alright. Anyway, uh, this should be the end of the video now, I think. Uh, we don't want to sort of go through all this. But you get the idea. 
All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this particular video. Everyone sort of has their own methods, etc. But yes, beef suet tallow. And just cost a bit of time and a bit of LPG. See you guys.